your AAA foundation for traffic safety welcomes you to using your eyes effectively when driving. We're going to explore the fascinating world of visual perception, and we'll answer questions like, what's the difference between the two types of information our eyes provide us with? Where on the driving scene should a driver concentrate most of his or her attention? And what's the effect of alcohol on a driver's visual perception? The answers to these questions and more in Using Your Eyes Effectively When Driving. Welcome to Driving Safety. I'm Patrice King-Brown. And I'm John Burnett. You know, the skill of safe driving is mostly in your mind. How well you think about what's going on around you. To think clearly and react quickly, you need information. And most of that information comes to you through your eyes. It's called visual perception, and it means your ability to notice many things at once. To get the right information to the brain, a driver's eyes have to move constantly, picking out the appropriate parts of the driving scene at the right time. Let's see how you can make sure you're using your eyes right when you drive. First, let's take a look at how a driver's eyes work. What's the difference between the two types of vision our eyes provide? Our central vision is concentrated in a spot that covers about three degrees of our visual field, and peripheral vision, or side vision, covers the rest. Now, as you can see here, the three degrees of central vision is a very small area in the middle of your total field of vision. But central vision allows us to make some very important driving judgments, like estimating distance and reading details in the traffic scene. Our peripheral vision, or side vision, is not as sharp as central vision, but it is more sensitive to light and motion. And that's a good thing, because it helps us detect events to the side that are important to us, even if we aren't looking directly at them. Events like cars entering our field of vision from the side, or warning lights on ambulances, police cars, and other emergency vehicles. Central vision plus side vision make up the entire visual field, the main source for the information that every driver needs for safe driving. And most driver mistakes are caused by bad habits in the way they use their eyes. Now let's take a look at the best way to make our visual perception work for us when we're driving. Because how you use your eyes will determine how safely you drive. Where in the driving scene should a driver concentrate the most attention? Most of a driver's attention should be concentrated on the vehicle's intended path of travel. There are three basic rules to follow in developing good eye habits for driving. First, aim high and look ahead, not down. The experienced driver's attention is focused on the road ahead, with the central vision following the intended path of travel. Second, keep your eyes moving. The good driver concentrates on selecting details in the traffic scene and on the distance between the car and objects ahead. Third, get the big picture. Search the whole scene, not just part of it. Check the rearview mirrors to see ahead and behind you. As you approach an intersection, watch for vehicles and pedestrians moving in all directions, for traffic control devices, and for anything else that might block your vision or otherwise increase risk. Now let's see how these rules work in some actual driving situations. We know that driving is primarily a task of information processing, but in order for us to learn what visual cues are important for driving, we must be able to describe the driver's visual search process. This is a representation of a driver's visual field. The oval area in the middle of the field represents central vision. The grayed area surrounding the oval represents side vision. When we drive, our eyes move in a series of rapid, jerky movements. Between each movement, the eye pauses for a fraction of a second, then darts to another part of the scene. These pauses are known as fixations. Now, even though these fixations are very short, they give the driver's brain time to gather important information from the eye's image of the driving scene. Let's watch how the eyes of two experienced drivers cover the driving scene as they confront two potentially hazardous driving situations, negotiating a curve and merging onto a freeway. The same three rules that apply to training your vision apply here. First, aim high and look ahead, not down. The eyes of an experienced driver tend to drive ahead, typically sweeping into the curve several seconds before her car reaches it. Two, keep your eyes moving. She uses the lane lines close to her car to maintain proper lateral position. And three, get the big picture. Her eyes select important clues as to how to maneuver the car, the curvature of the road, the condition of the berm, and the speed and direction of other traffic. Merging is another potentially difficult maneuver. 
Let's watch this experienced driver's eye habits as he negotiates a merge. A good driver starts sampling the conditions in the stream of traffic 10 seconds before reaching the merge point. In a merge situation, experienced drivers maintain lane position by glancing momentarily to the right side of the road. They always maintain an awareness of other traffic patterns developing around them. Train your eyes to follow the three rules. Aim high and look ahead, not down. Keep your eyes moving and get the big picture. Keep these rules in mind whenever you drive and your eye habits will improve. Let's look now at how some experienced drivers have trained their eyes to develop special skills that help them in driving. With experience, some driving tasks don't require every eye fixation to be directed only toward traffic and the path of the car. In this situation, for example, a driver is concerned with avoiding a pedestrian but is still able to maintain control of the vehicle with only very brief glances at the intended path of travel. This driver has developed the ability to use side vision to judge distance. Another driver was told to fixate on the car on the right while maintaining proper distance behind the car directly ahead. Her central vision remains on the car to her right, but she is still able to follow the car in front without looking directly at it. Let's look at two examples in which drivers are functioning at less than top efficiency. This driver is tired. Notice how his central vision tends to fixate lower and to the right, often dipping all the way down to the road surface. This driver, on the other hand, is mildly under the influence of alcohol. His example allows us to answer our fourth question. What is the effect of alcohol on visual perception? Even though he isn't legally drunk, after only a few drinks, the effects of alcohol on his eye habits are readily noticeable. His concentration is failing. His eyes are staring straight ahead. His central vision stuck squarely on the surface of the road. He notices nothing to either side, a very dangerous situation, both for himself and every other driver on the road. Let's turn now to how new drivers can train themselves to have good eye habits and effectively search the driving scene for important information that will allow them to drive more safely. Inexperienced drivers have different visual search patterns than those of experienced drivers. Typically, student drivers go through a three-stage development process as they become more proficient. In the first stage, beginning drivers exhibit an active search pattern, but many of their fixations fall on unimportant areas of the driving scene. In the second stage, new drivers show an in-out pattern, sharing their fixations for near lane position with glances ahead. In the third stage, we find the normal pattern of experienced drivers, who fixate far ahead while using their side vision for information about their lateral position. To train yourself to use your eyes properly while driving, you must follow our three rules. First, aim high and look ahead. Give yourself a visual lead time of at least 20 to 30 seconds. That's about two city blocks at 30 miles per hour, four at 55. Second, keep your eyes moving. Roadway and off-road conditions are constantly changing. Search the scene for clues to these changes. Stay alert for changes on the roadway or potentially dangerous conditions that might require you to readjust the speed or position of your car. And third, get the big picture. Search the whole scene, not just part of it. Scanning helps you gather more information and keeps your mind engaged on the traffic scene, which reduces boredom and fatigue. Scanning also means checking your rear view and side view mirrors at least once every block in the city and once every five seconds in heavy traffic. Because of blind spots to the rear of and behind your vehicle, head checks are an important part of the scanning process. Always return your central vision to your intended path of travel and use your side vision for information along the edges of the traffic scene. Well, that pretty much wraps up our presentation on visual perception. Applying what we've shown you in this presentation will increase the efficiency of your eyes and brain in gathering and processing the information you need to drive safely. Remember, your safety and the safety of everybody on the road with you depends on all of us improving our skills at seeing and anticipating driving hazards. Thanks for joining us, everybody.